Oh, this Cooper Bourne has got some guts. I'll tell you what, this spicy little hot hatch weighs almost as much as an Audi Q5. Oh, corner coming up. Go on, go on, go on. <laughs> ah. So, how much do you reckon a sporty hatchback should weigh? There used to be a time when you'd say about a ton. These days, maybe 1,200 kilos, 1,300 at a push. Well, not if you ask Cupra, because its newborn EV is, wait for it, more than 1,700 kilograms. 1,700. 1,700. To put that into context, right? That is as much as an UP GTI and a Series 1 Lotus Elise put together. Why? The answer is simple. This Bourne is made by Seat's performance sub-brand, Cupra. It's an electric hatchback that's based on the ID3. Now, with any electric car, it needs to have decent range. And to get decent range, you need a decent sized battery. And with, well, the modern technology or current technology, if you will, a decent battery is going to be very heavy. So here we are. But look, we're not going to put that against this car at all because have Cupra made a very decent, very fun electric hatchback? Let's find out. Let's get down to business. Even though it's based on the ID3, the Cupra Born is stiffer, sharper, and angrier. You can choose between a 58 kilowatt hour battery or a bigger. 77 kilowatt hour version, which can do an impressive 335 miles on a single charge. And all Borns are rear wheel drive. That could make things very interesting when things get twisty. So like any EV, the Born is defined by its instant acceleration. Now the version we've got here is the V3 version. It's got 201 brake horsepower, a 0-62 time of 7.3 seconds, a range of 260 miles. It's not too shabby. I mean, it feels pretty blooming nippy. It's not bad. It's not rip your face off quick, but it's quick enough. And actually, when you get it up to motorway speeds, that's when you lose a bit of acceleration, really. But let's be honest, that's not where you're going to have the most fun with this car. It's on twisty, turny country roads is where you're going to enjoy this car the most. I mean, this is the kind of car that can just kind of squirt between corners. And then when you get to a corner, it doesn't fall apart at all. I mean, there's no disguising the weight of this car. It's a heavy car. When you hit a corner quickly, that's when you realize that this is rear wheel drive because it makes it a little bit more entertaining, which I'm going to show you as I approach this corner now. Here we go. Let's have a bit of fun on the corner. Go. Yeah. Oh my God, I feel like Formula E. So, okay, the Bourne is good, but is it a proper hot hatch? Does it excite like a Cupra Leon or a Fiesta ST? Well, not quite. I mean, the steering is very nicely weighted and the body roll is very nicely controlled, but it lacks that little bit of exciting fizz that most hot hatches have. And I can't quite put my finger on it, but most hot hatches have that little bit of excitement in your tum-tum. This doesn't give me the excited tum-tum as it should. Does that make sense? I mean, it is sportier than an ID3. It's not as comfortable as an ID3, but I mean, it's a decent ride anyway. I guess the fun bit is taking the corners, which she says as she approaches another corner, shall we? Screw it, let's do it. Because I can. It's fun, but it's not as fun as I want it to be. So it's probably going to be a while until we get a proper lightweight, fun electric hot hatch. But the Cupra Born is still pretty nice to drive and it promises a few little neat tricks inside. Should we take a look? I tell you what, quality and materials in here, way better than the ID3. I mean, you've got copper detailing, which is all very Cupra, ambient lighting all along here. These Dynamica bucket seats, very, very nice and comfy. I'm not going to lie, the dash is a bit deeper than I expected it to be, so actually visibility isn't that great, even with the windows down at the side here. But everything else, lovely. I mean, look, cubbies. Love a cubby. Cubbies. 
door bins lovely. There's a button down here. I want to press it. Does it do anything? I'm having a massage. Oh, oh, well, that's quite nice. Oh, I'll, take, I'll do some voiceover stuff. Just leave me here for a minute. But let's talk tech. Has Cupra followed VW's lead with its infotainment system and touchy, slidey climate controls? Yes. Yes, it has. Touchy, touchy, slideys. But look, I'm not going to dwell on this too much because we all know how much I can't stand it. But although these are also touch sensitive, these are also really satisfying. Like this. It's like you're scrolling, but not really scrolling. I kind of like how that feels. I don't know. Look, this screen is bigger than what you get in the ID3. This is 12 inches. And actually, the system within it, it's all reskinned, right? It's all got reskin software. It's reasonably easy to use once you get used to it. At first glance, I was a bit like, oh, I don't know what any of this does. But actually, now I'm used to it. It's not too bad. The graphics are very nice. It's, yeah, it's reasonably straightforward. But again, you've got a kind of get used to the vibe of it. Screen behind here, all of this is basically taken from the ID3. So diddy little screen, but it's got everything that you need, your speed and your charge, whatever you've got left and your gear selector that's taken from the ID3 as well. And if you're sitting in here for the first time, the parking brake is on the side here, just so you know, because actually it's quite hard to find when you're sat in this seat, but it's there. So yeah. The rear seats have plenty of room for a couple of adults and the Bourne's funky proportions mean that you get a 385 litre boot, which is bigger than a VW Golf's. That's not bad, eh? Oh, and you know what? We like the way it looks. The Bourne really stands out, even if it doesn't get your pulse racing like you might expect. But look at it. It's lovely. 